Round one. Fight. Heroes never die. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. <laughs> I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Hungry gamers. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome, boys and girls, to a very special Xbox Series X and S centric episode. I'm your not so humble host, Brendan White. You can find me just about everywhere at Brendan 8 Bit. And joining me today, my podcast ride or die, the Soap McTavish to my Captain Price. You can find her on them socials at Miss Ellie Hart. How are you doing today, Miss Ellie Hart? Doing well, and I'm guessing based on my experience of the PlayStation uh, podcast that we recorded earlier this week, you have named titles that are releases for the Xbox? <laughs> I swerved on this one. I went with uh, notable characters from the modern Call of Duty games. So ah. Soap McTavish and, and Captain Price are probably two of the stalwarts of the of the series, most notably known through Modern Warfare and then um, you know referenced in uh, other other lore and, and entries into the COD franchise. And I thought, you know, we were playing COD yesterday a bit. Let's yes. uh, let's sort of connect those threads and uh, bring it full circle. So uh, here we are. We don't have a, a special guest here to talk Xbox. We thought we'd just keep the core duo intact in this situation. So we're going to be deep diving on our thoughts uh, a week in now since, or a week and a half, nearly two weeks now since the Xbox Series X made its way out into the wild. Mm. Uh, we've sort of been playing fairly extensively on a few titles, uh, you know, putting the console through its paces, so on and so forth. So we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on what we think about the look and feel of the, the console and the controller, uh, the, you know, the internal hardware itself, uh, touch on some games as well, and just give you listeners some honest opinions as far as what we think of the the new platform as a whole. You know, is it, is it worth trying to seek uh, you know, right now in the immediate future, or do you think you can maybe hold out on it? Uh, you know, is it is it worth the price and the hype, so on and so forth? So, I, I guess we can sort of start with with the aesthetics of this thing. Like it, uh, you know, it's it's not quite the the same level of eyesore as the PlayStation Five, but it is still it is still a, a sizable little unit. The dimensions it's it's fifteen point one centimeters by fifteen point one centimeters by thirty point one centimeters in dimension. Uh, the, the total volume is 6.86 litres and oh. the weight uh, runs at 4.45 kilo or 9.8 pounds. So it's 0.2 of a pound or um, about uh, 50 grams lighter than the PlayStation 5. Uh, aesthetically, I don't mind this look. Like it's very, very stark contrast compared to the PlayStation 5. Like this thing's very understated. It's just a big black obelisk of a thing. You know, very, very understated as far as the the buttons and the the light up. Like you see the Xbox button lit up sort of dimly when the thing is on, but outside mm. of that, you don't really see much variation in color outside of the the black, uh, you know, rectangular beast that is uh, sitting in front of you. What what do you think of the look? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? What's your thoughts? Um, I'm very pleased with the look. When they released and announced, like, um, you know, the sleek standard. You know, black box design i'm like cool it looks fine i actually didn't even mind the vent system um up the top or i guess the side mm -hmm. depending how you have it but to me i'm just like okay it's a very simple design it's a slick design and um you know having it now in my home it's it fits in it doesn't stand out it's just perfectly placed there dimensionally wise it's also pretty damn good as well even um the smaller edition the uh, digital style with the white and the um venting on the side yeah like I, with the speaker almost look on it yeah I, I still don't mind that one either like in, in comparative to the two consoles that were released um for the ps5 and xbox even even that one i don't mind and i like that there actually was a very noticeable difference between the two because that would probably make purchasing for parents and maybe those not so informed a little bit easier as well um, yeah, because the naming convention certainly don't help. The Xbox Lord Series no. X or Xbox Series S no. for those playing at home. So, no. yeah, like discless editions. So they've gone the same route as the PlayStation where you've got the PlayStation 5 
I guess you could say the full-fledged unit with the disk drive, and then you've got the diskless edition where it's only digital download only. And that's what they've done here with the Xbox Series S, but that's a sort of a stripped back version from a power and feature yes. perspective as well. That's true. Uh, we both went with the uh, the big black obelisk, the Xbox Series X. So we've got the flagship uh, bit of device. Um, aesthetically, I like it. it. It doesn't take away from anything on my TV stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sort of blends in because it is a, you know, black's a fairly, fairly neutral color. Uh, it can fit in with, with any type of, aesthetic in in a entertainment space i think so um i'm really vibing it it looks cool beside the telly it reminds me because it does have yeah the the vents the like the air and the ventilation with the fans on the top and bottom it reminds me remember i can't remember the brand of them back in the day but i think it was called like it was actually named like the boom box and it was one of them like big speakers you'd carry and have the like the speakers on the front and the back mm-hmm. and you could sort of carry it around as a portable audio device it reminds me of that for some reason like mm-hmm. i remember a few kids at school had them and i was so envious of this big obnoxious uh you know portable music device that these kids were trot around at lunchtime and um yeah getting some vibes of that but also a little bit like fifth elementy a little bit stargatey yes. stuff like that like it's yeah. It's very, very futuristic in its own way. Like we talked about that, I think, on the PlayStation 5 pod too, where it's it's very, very modern, very sci-fi. You know, Detroit Become Humans, the biggest comp we had with that thing. But yeah. this thing, it's it's in that same sort of sci-fi, semi-futuristic mold, but it also doesn't look out of place amongst your your current or your older hardware or older aesthetic in, in your living or, or entertainment space. Yeah, and I think it just being your standardized, like, cubed box rectangular shape deciding which way that you were going to have it on your entertainment unit whether it be straight up or on its side it you weren't going to run into many issues with you know how it was going to look i have my playstation on its side and it still looks weird um Mm -hmm. so me too can confirm (laughs) yeah so at least with this it didn't matter what you were doing with it it would just still you know aesthetically just fit into whatever the surroundings were yeah, it's it's a few centimeters too thick to fit in the TV cabinet slot. So uh, the PlayStation Five fits in, and it, and that's where it is. It's in there with my Apple TV, but the the Xbox Series X is is on the vertical, uh, you know, taking its its sort of spot front and center beside the television. And and I don't mind it. Like it, it as I said, it looks good, uh, it feels good. Um, on on I guess the aesthetics, some of the other changes that uh, that gamers would have noticed is as they've sort of updated the the home screen and the user interface, like not in a huge way. Like I think PlayStation certainly took a big jump forward as far as rehashing and, and, and and adjusting that uh, user interface where Xbox or Microsoft, just some subtle changes, like some, some quality of life improvements, cleaning up the the tile system on it. um, All, all the functionalities as far as uh, pressing the, the X button to, to bring up the menus and things. That's all the same. Uh, they've just sort of laid out the the default home screen now in an easier way where you've got your store with direct access, you've got Game Pass listed on there, you've got all your games. Like So there isn't a massive reinvention as far as the day-to-day uh, sort of visuals that you're used to when you're navigating these menus, but mm. just a couple of subtle nods and a little bit a bit more polish, like um, just even like the font changes and the tiles and everything. It just looks a little bit slicker, but... No, no huge changes that I've come across in that regard. What about you? Um, I mean, yeah, like for the mo- most part, not, not much has changed. But the thing that I've always kind of like disliked navigating with the Xbox interface is the little sidebar where you kind of, you know, whether go through of signing out or switching accounts, mm-hmm. finding your friends or everything like that. I haven't really liked that very much. I don't really like how that sidebar navigates and how um, condensed like the certain tabs are with like information and where you can find it. So I was kind of hoping that we'd get an update of that. And now obviously having used the PlayStation, we did make fun of the fact that we had to learn it. But I mean, now that if we were to compare the two, I would say that the PlayStation UI is much more eye-pleasing and I like what they've done with it. They've they've kind of progressed. They've moved forward where Xbox kind of just said, I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it. But then, I mean, where's the innovation then? Yeah, they're they're very they're they're very embedded in this thought process as far as 
smart delivery and optimizing games mm. and, and your old catalog and your old hardware and everything will will follow you follow you through which which i love you know that's great in many ways but as you said like you look at what playstation have done and, and the biggest thing that we touched on and that that probably needs a little bit more love from what sony are doing is just the that card system where you can get live help on the fly and hints and guides and cool little factoids and, and little videos and whatnot like that's such a cool little quality of life improvement that's going to help your moment to moment gameplay and if you do get stuck on things where with xbox they don't have anything like that and and I guess maybe that's something they could look at implementing because I think it is a cool little feature. Yeah. I mean, and that's, but, um, that's a good point where it's like, as opposed to, you know, on the outside and making everything work on the outside, on the inside, this is something that maybe that they can eventually update um, and then obviously push through. So I guess it's not it's not too bad for now if they want to, like, take a step back and look and study at what PlayStation's done and go, okay, what can we do then? But oh if, yeah, just for the moment you can kind of see the difference. Yeah, they'll, they'll both be doing that. Like, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery, they say. So yeah. I think they'll be they'll be stealing ideas and, and little subtle nods to one another. Um, I, I do like that they've kept some of the things the same, like long pressing on the, the Xbox home button will give you immediately turn the controller off, res, reset the, the, the console, power down, things like that. So you still do have that, that comfort and knowledge knowing you can, can get in and out uh, from that side really quick. Um, one other quick thing on the aesthetics, but it kind of blends into hardware as well, is on on day one, setting this thing up, I know you had a very different experience than I did, but yeah. you, you, you connect this thing up, you get it on the internet, uh, you, you power it in, and then it tells you to, to just jump on the Xbox app to do your, your, your preliminary um, settings and, and getting this thing ready to roll. And it was super smooth for me. I had no issues, jumped on the app, um, you know, click, 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 added these details, saved that password, boom, boom, boom. My my user accounts then set up, my games are starting to download all my save data carried. Like it was super smooth, super trouble free. I know you hit a couple of speed bumps, but that experience for me was really, really good. So I just wanted to shout out Xbox and Microsoft for, for making that a really swift painless process i agree like once um we overcame our hurdle um everything else then kind of fell in line but with us unfortunately it was more of a case of the you know instruction of using the xbox app to then link up with the unit but unfortunately we were having some kind of like disconnect between the two so that was the only hiccup we had but once we overcame that then yeah i do agree eventually the process was pretty seamless after that I love technology these days, like things like that when it's done well and you can only amount, imagine the extensive amount of like R&D and testing that would have went into these types of things to make mm-hmm. sure that app and that console is going to synergize and make it easy and not take away from the experience, but instead enhance and just simplify it. So I wanted to give a shout out to that. But if we sort of start looking inwards towards the hardware, like if we're sort of doing a, a comparison between between the consoles um obviously uh, the the biggest ones is sort of the cpu and the gpu enhancements so the cpu it's an eight core 3.8 gigahertz amd zen 2 cpu compared to a 2.3 gigahertz eight core amd custom that was in the xbox one x so that's not the base so the xbox one x was probably double as strong as the original xbox one and the xbox series i mean xbox one s uh, but if we're looking at the GPU as well, uh, we are doubling from the Xbox One X, which was sitting at around six teraflops. We are jumping up to 12 teraflops. So that is 1.7 teraflops higher than the PlayStation 5. Uh, so that GPU, when it is maximized and running on its full potential, uh, is the strongest uh, console GPU in the marketplace. Obviously, with your frame rates, uh, up to 120 frames per second, depending on if your television or monitor is going to support that where the Xbox One X was up to 60 and the Xbox One S or Xbox One were sitting around that 30 frame cap. With your resolution, you can do up to 8K, uh, but most of the time you're going to be getting your 4K 60 FPS or 4K 120 FPS. 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Drive as opposed to just the HD Blu-ray Drive. Storage is still one and the same. You still get one terabyte worth of storage, but it is on an SSD that is is something that's phenomenal we'll talk about as far as i guess quality of life improvements in the game but overall this thing is you know the the strongest 
console in the market by a long margin, uh, even compared to the PlayStation 5, uh, and, and especially compared to the previous gen uh, Xbox One uh, variants. So they've certainly put all their chips in the t- on the table uh, as far as leading with some strong hardware and sort of doubling down on on this console as as the console in the market and the marketing spiel and the spoof that they threw around it was about how strong it is and and how powerful it is and everything you can do and then on the back of that some of the some of the functionalities from a hardware perspective uh, obviously compatibility is phenomenal where you can use your old uh your old controllers your legacy hardware Mm. um headphones uh gaming headsets old controllers uh, so I've been using my um, Xbox Elite controller on mm-hmm. my Series X without an issue. The only thing is obviously you miss out on the um, the share button in the middle of the controller there for, for the quick save of photos and, and, and um, video, but that's a minor gripe. Um, smart delivery, uh, which is probably one of the biggest uh, caveats with Xbox. So that's going to, you buy that game on your Xbox One, variants that is also going to be working on your xbox series variants so uh it's a singular purchase going to up update and um be compatible when you do potentially take that jump to now current gen uh, and then you've got the optimized for xbox series x or s improvements for those games too uh quick resume is probably one of my favorite uh features in this new uh line of consoles and what that means is you could have multiple games on the fly that you're playing, dropping in, dropping out. And um, I've, I've tested this here and there over the last week or so where I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, and then um, case in point yesterday, I was playing some Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Then uh, you said, you want to come play some, some uh, Cold War? I'm like, yeah, for sure. Paused Valhalla, jumped out of there, loaded up uh, Cold War, was into that game in a handful of seconds. We played some rounds and then after dinner last night, went back on the Xbox, uh, you know, turned the Xbox off from from sleep mode, straight back into Valhalla. So mm-hmm. just been able to transition from game to game semi-instantly uh, without those those painful load screens and delays and having to close that app and open this one and whatever else. It's really, really cool. But what's your thoughts on, on the hardware and your experiences so far uh, with some of these features and, and little quality of life improvements? Um, quick resume is impressive in itself. Um, the occasion that comes to mind was uh, my uh, husband coming home a little too early before our, we had to head to the gym. So he literally just laid on the couch, turned on the Xbox and was back into where he was in Valhalla, just like instantly. And like, my man, it's, I just, I'm like, usually you're used to a few loading screens, a few, you know, processing moments where you kind of sit in there in the hang up, but no, nah, it was just instantaneous he was right into where he just left off and i that was impressive in itself um the other thing was uh just general uh processing times in games so i was playing uh yakuza like a dragon on my previous xbox one and there would be times where you would switch between scenes or moving into a building and there'd be some you know a, quite a bit of downtime and waiting for the next level or the next you know stage to kind of like load uh and then playing it again now on my series x the moments are like done in the blink of an eye so the improvement of like gameplay and not having that hang up like not having that disturbance in your gameplay is incredible like i didn't think i was going to notice it as much as i did so i was incredibly impressed with that it's it's crazy because like it's something that would be universally experienced right now for anyone that's got these consoles. And I guess some of the the people that have the higher end PCs with the, the GPUs and the CPUs that can accommodate this type of stuff too, is there is no downtime anymore. Like like we've talked about it a little bit here and there on, on podcasts the last week or so. And it's like during these loads or these transition moments or going into this new level or fast traveling, it's like, okay, now's the time to go make a cup of coffee or check check the social media or send a message. And it's like, that's all gone now. It's yeah. You're in and out in moments and you're like, so the way you game and the way you kill time in between gaming has changed. And 
it's kind of cool, but at the same time, it's like, oh, I've got to rewire my brain because I'm so used to exactly. putting the control down for a second, picking up my phone, fluffing around on there. Oh, no, go get a water, whatever, you know, but now all that's gone. Exactly. One of the best comments that I saw online was that um, someone kind of said to their friends, like, I know I usually get back to you pretty quickly, but please understand that with this new console, um, I don't have that downtime anymore to check my messages and reply back. So they're not looking, we're not looking at us, our phones as much so there's going to be a lot of unanswered messages unfortunately because we're the games are just flying through yeah that that social interaction is going to take a big dive because of these consoles so uh yeah as as that person you saw on social media i i mirror that uh that message to to friends and family out there it's, it's not that i'm ignoring you i'm just got no time because i'm gaming you know and it doesn't let me pick up my phone <laughs> so technically ignoring you a little <laughs> technically games are kind more of important. yeah it's not that I'm ignoring you during my downtime. It's just I don't have any downtime while I'm gaming now. Nice. <laughs> yes, that will do. If we're talking hardware still, some other, some other things like the 3D spatial audio I've found really noticeable, especially when you're playing with a headset on, like playing COD yesterday, chuck, chucking a headset on and hearing the footsteps uh, and being able to determine roughly where they're coming from, whether they're coming from fr in front, behind, beside, so on and so forth. That's yeah. really, really beneficial playing shooters. So the um, people we I love playing, with. like if I'm playing anything online or competitive, I'll definitely be playing with a headset because it's just going to help so much. And it might give you a tiny fraction more advantage or awareness to, to keep you alive moment to moment. So mm. Yeah, I've noticed the 3D spatial audio really, really sort of coming through in a big way, especially when using some uh, Audio-Technica headphones, best in the business, audiotechnica.com.au to check that out and get yourself some yourself. Uh, but if we're talking about the controller, it's pretty much more of the same. Mm. You know, it's it's uh, the same sort of shape and feel. Uh, they've changed a few little things subtly, like the D-pad has now gone to sort of that disc style D-pad that you've seen recently on the Elite controllers, which I like. The textured grips and triggers is there. Uh, it's got a USB-C connection now instead of the mini uh, USB. So faster charge time. Still got 3.5 mil audio jack for hardwired headsets. It weighs a couple of grams more than the previous Xbox One controllers. Mm. So it's still got a little bit of heft to it, which I like. Uh, my main con on the controller itself which isn't really a con because I've got a lot of rechargeable batteries is the fact that it's still running the old two double A battery uh, <laughs> set up on the back of this thing. Like um, they have, they have improved their Bluetooth technology for connection between controller and, and um, the console itself. It's, it's now using Bluetooth low energy. So those batteries will last longer, but it is still a minor gripe where they couldn't have just had the batteries internalized, but mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? What's what's your thoughts on the controller? Is it feeling good? Uh it feels fine. Like like we kind of stated, not much has changed. The texture grip is a nice addition. A lot of um Xbox controllers I've been familiar with have usually had quite a smooth grasp. Um I don't know if it's gonna improve my gameplay any. Um, but it you know, you notice the difference when it comes to like like hand feel, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um also agree with the whole battery uh situation. <laughs> We're now looking at our options of just rechargeable batteries because the problem is, is when you pick them up, you don't know you're running out until the occasion happens. And then if you don't have any batteries or anything to replace it with, you kind of like crap out of luck. So the panic run, especially when you're playing anything <laughs> online like multiplayer and your, your controller goes flat and then you're like, I'm running to the kitchen to grab my rechargeables out of the cupboard like that. 30 to 60 seconds is so tense because you could be in the middle of a kill streak or if you're playing like an Apex or whatever and you've only got your singular life. It is scary shit when you run out of batteries. It's just that drop, like the flashing and the drop and then the little notification over there just saying, you've been disconnected. And you're just like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I agree with that. But overall, I mean, we've been kind of spoiled, like um, people much like ourselves who maybe got their hands on both consoles and we've been gifted with quite an incredible place, new new PlayStation con um, controller. Uh, so it's kind of a bit like it's a, it's a bit of a show off with um, having to do a comparison between the two. So like we kind of said with the UI, much of the same with like small changes, but um, I wouldn't say anything too impressive or notable. 
Yeah, like the the dual sense certainly flexes over the controller. Like if you're going to compare just the controllers one to one, the dual sense certainly stands above the Xbox Series X slash S controller in probably a pretty big way, just with some of the smarts and and the technology inside. Like the the, the Series X slash S controllers, they're still great. You know, you've you still got. Uh, vibration-based feedback and there is a bit of tension in the triggers and the the tactile feel with the textured grips and things Um, so there is some cool things there but they're they're just very much doubling down on this big shared ecosystem Mm. your old controllers can be utilized on this so you can be playing multiplayer with friends even if you only have one series x controller so it cuts out a potential 100 plus dollar purchase where you need a controller uh, for, for new gen to to be yeah. able to play multiplayer games with friends, so I do. Agree. I see what they're doing there. Yeah, I do. I do think that's actually a good thing to point out, where they haven't exclusively cut off people from their previous purchases. Um, which you know, if you make an investment into hardware, you would hope that you would get your value out of it. So Microsoft is essentially, you know, forward that onto people consumers essentially by saying like something you bought for the previous will still work with the current, like the new gen, I guess. So. I think that yeah. is probably nicer for consumers in regards to, especially in an you know economical crisis where people probably can't you know go out buying multiple controllers and whatnot. So yeah, seven seven fifty for a console is hefty already, and then having to drop another hundred plus on a on another controller to be able to play with your your partner or your friend or your kid, you know, it's 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 an outlay, and um, yeah, it's very interesting. And one thing that um. I'm surprised but also happy about is they've just wholly and solely focused on this console as a gaming hub. There's no Kinect camera or anything like that. They've gone away with trying to make this, you know, this is your multimedia center, you know, like yeah. making it your all-in-one. And, and yes, it's got the the various apps where you can watch watch your Netflix and things like that through the console as well. But it's it's weird because it seems like there's a very big line in the sand in in that regard where I'm very much my consoles are for gaming. I've got no issue in watching my Netflix and stuff on there. I'd prefer to watch them like in years past through the smart TV, but now with the Apple TV, like all my media goes through that media hub, my mm-hmm. gaming goes through the gaming hubs and I like to keep it separate, but other people like to have it all going through the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X, which is which is surprising. Where, where do you stand on this one? I am very much like you. My gaming consoles are strictly my gaming consoles. And I feel like especially with some of the, you know, some of the issues that people have brought up in regards to storage with the Microsoft devices specifically, because um, as we found out with trying to extend your storage, Microsoft has kind of like hitched a deal on having only a, one exclusive you know, it's like an external hard drive, right? So, you know, yeah. it's the only one yeah. that is compatible for extending um, storage within your console. So, you know, if you're going to be installing a bunch of different apps to use it as an entertainment center, you will start really taking up space pretty quickly. So, yeah. So that's that's the biggest, like with my pros and cons list that we've been sort of working through, that's the biggest con from the hardware side uh, from my perspective as well is that expandable storage. So mm. if you do want... The super fast SSD boot, um, the proprietary one terabyte Seagate, excuse me, Seagate drive is 360 AUD for a one terabyte drive. Like it's it's tiny and it's cute and it slots straight straight into the back of the console and it harmonizes with the internal SSD. So you're gonna still get that fast load, fast boot, things like that. But you, you can do the the traditional USB hard drives, but it's gonna slow it right back down to previous gen as far as loading in and out and you're not going to get these these super fast times and things like that so but yeah so 360 is a hefty a hefty undertaking so that's 1100 bucks to get two terabytes of storage in a console so oh boy but yeah there's people out there that need it but uh yeah that's that's the biggest negative there if we start to sort of migrate towards the the gaming side of it shortly but first we might uh do a quick little quick little ad read from our friends over there at manscaped how's that sound sounds good to me all right so this special xbox series eccentric episode of the hungry gamers is brought to you by our partners over at manscaped the leaders in below the waist grooming products who want to help level up your game 
If you want to maximize your Wampa fruits, listen up as your joystick will never look and feel better. The first thing you need to hear about is the Perfect Package 3.0 kit. It is loaded with everything you need to increase your smart delivery. And it all starts with a Lawnmower 3.0, complete with advanced skin safe technology, which will leave you free of nicks and cuts via way of its painted ceramic blade, and will leave you optimized for whatever the day throws at you. It also comes with a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. Some of these liquid tools for your family jewels includes the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing deodorant for your hammer of dawn. This is a total game changer. Men, why aren't you already putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Next up is the Crop Reviver, an AOE spray on ball toner that will not only refresh your chaos emeralds, but also give you a little pep in your shadow step. The perfect package also comes with a nifty travel bag, disposable shaving mats, and a set of the comfiest anti-chafing boxes you have ever worn. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. And listeners, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code 8bit at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using the code A-T-E-B-I-T. Remember people, nobody likes a messy controller. And uh, on those anti-chafing boxes, I actually slept in them last night and can confirm it was one of the comfiest sleeps I've had in quite some time. So uh, Mm -hmm. shout out to Manscaped for helping me get those quality Zs. But yeah, if we sort of jump back into the rest of the pod here and talk about the games or or, or lack thereof games, (laughs) you could say from an exclusives perspective, like, and this is... This is the same that uh, the PlayStation 5 presented, with, uh, presented us with as well this past week. Like there wasn't a huge amount of uh, launch exclusives and Xbox were really impeded by the fact that uh, Halo Infinite yeah. copped the delay. Like it would have been the big flag bearer tent pole. Oh my God, need to get a console day one because Halo's on it type of game. Like it would have been a, a serious hype machine. The fact it's been delayed until early 2021 hurt and um then it left us with a list uh that had exclusives such as cuisine royale enlisted (laughs) gears tactics Mm. tetra's effect connected which actually has been getting a lot of love out there the falconeer and the the biggest surprise and this is sort of an asterisk because it is it will it was released on playstation 4 and pc on day one but as far as next gen or now current gen exclusives yakuza like a dragon is only available on Xbox uh, Series X slash S. PlayStation 5 is about six months down the line, yeah, if I March, remember. If so, I remember yeah. 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 So that was the launch slate. Like, obviously, we had things like um, Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla dropping on November the 10th here in Australia as well as, as sort of day one launch titles. But uh, it was sort of fairly lean. Uh, compared to just Xbox only exclusives, uh, Gears Tactics. I'm not a tactics guy, but that game seems to be reviewing really well. Tetris, as I said, it's getting a lot of hype out there. People people go mad for these connected like multiplayer Tetris games. But Yakuza is a cool cool title, very quirky. I'm about to actually do my first run through of it this weekend, so I'm excited to see what kind of insanity is going to present itself to me for. But if we're talking games. Uh, the game that I've probably been most embedded with over the last few weeks is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Mm-hmm. And uh, full disclosure, rolled credits on that last night. Uh, oh. Mainline story, 80 hours it took me to finish this game. 80. <laughs> and that's like there's still side quests and, and yeah. uh, various things to uncover within the game. But 80 hours later and I finally rolled credits on Valhalla. Great experience. That's some good value for money. Yeah, yeah. And obviously there's there's expansions and things to come off the back of that too. So if you're looking for a game to tide you over for the next many, 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 many moons, check out Valhalla. But um, I, I started playing that on the Xbox One X and then uh, migrated to the Xbox Series X and there's some noticeable improvements. Uh, we've already talked about like the load times and things, the fast travel and uh, the trip like uh, is the biggest change, like going back to your settlement or just fast traveling around to to sort of dock areas or um, vantage points in the game. Super fast, you know. You're there within five to ten seconds maximum, as opposed to sixty odd seconds. So that's a huge, huge quality of life improvement in that regard. 
And as far as the, the graphics, you know, there is some improvements in the character models. Uh, Eivor uh, looks more handsome or more pretty or more rugged or however you want to, you know, typecast your Eivor. Uh, but the biggest changes you'll notice are in the lighting with the with the ray tracing and the HDR, uh, the, the sun rays and the reflection off the water and the dust particle, dust particles and things like that are very noticeable and in a very good way. Like I find myself constantly when I'm like climb to the top of a mountain or whatever else to find one of these synchronization points and you're just sort of in awe of the environment and how pretty it is and the draw distance, like the distance that you can see across the skyline as far as where you are and maybe where you need to go is phenomenal. There's no sort of uh, juddering and load in uh, the sunsets, the the moon, the, the stars when you're in a dark cave utilizing um, like a, a lit torch in a dark cave and just seeing how the, how the light bounces off the walls from like the flame and things. It's really cool in that regard. Like it's just... A lot of little subtle things that's going to make you go, whoa, occasionally. Or like, damn, that's pretty. Or mm. damn, that's awesome. But um, they're, they're, that's the biggest noticeable change. Like I've been playing a lot of COD on there with yourself as well. Uh, they're the main two games. Oh, and Destiny. Actually, was playing Destiny 2 Beyond Light oh, yeah. on the Xbox uh, Series X as well. And <laughs> this game now loads quicker than my PC. Uh, my PC is a little older, so that's that's, you know, one one thing to bear in mind but it loads quicker it plays in 4k uh it looks better on my series x compared to my computer so wow. uh you know that's that's some big flex there from microsoft <laughs> and from bungie but um what's your thoughts and experience uh jumping across from like a graphical perspective and even just these games you've been playing yeah so um with a, a comparative i guess with yakuza i'm not seeing too much of a graphical change i mean that comes usually with the style of game as well you probably don't mm -hmm. see any of the um, major differences um i have been watching my husband actually play valhalla and i do agree is it's i wouldn't necessarily say it's consistent graphically i've um, witnessed a few environmental uh, issues and glitches and such but i believe that there are some really beautiful, stunning scenes, and I'm I'm assuming it must be when it's not a high volume area with like NPCs. It's usually maybe when you're adventuring alone, but mm -hmm. there'll be beautiful countrysides, um, waterfalls, and then snow scenes, and just as you mentioned, just being on the highest peak and looking out at the world around, and it would be stunning with the sun setting in the background and just the light rays kind of piercing through like tree lines as well. Like that is really impressive. So not necessarily consistent, but like those those specific scenes are, are really, really stunning. So, um, and then in regards to Call of Duty, I would say like it's very polished um, graphically. I, I definitely, we only played, or I personally have only played multiplayer. Uh, but Me even, too, me even, too. <laughs> even on the I've heard the story though, it's really cool. I've actually, yeah, watched a few reviews. Um, uh, unfortunately, it has been some time since I've really dedicated myself to a Call of Duty. Obviously, <laughs> everyone witnessed that at the start of the podcast. Um, I haven't really played the story in a Call of Duty probably since... I think Call of Duty 3, like to oh, be damn. completely honest. Going way back. Like I think there was one that I started and I just stopped playing <laughs> and I didn't care. I think COD usually for me is a PvP experience. So, But like um, witnessing where this story is set and, um, you know, the little bits of history that it encompasses, it's actually quite interesting and I love the um the retro aesthetic of it as well so I don't know maybe it will be my return to you know Call of Duty story we'll have to see but uh, multiplayer wise the maps are really nice really polished I like the variations in maps and I like that the maps are like so different that you could probably see that your gameplay style would change with what the map is as well so mm -hmm. um I'm had a lot of fun playing it which was nice it's it's a welcome distraction that game compared to a lot of the others that are that are out in the past couple of weeks. Like uh, I think by the time we we return to mainline THG next week, I want to try and play through the the campaign. I think it's a it's a sub ten hour campaign. It might be around six to eight, which usually seems to be average runtime for these these days. So 
get into that, see what Robert Redford and co are up to uh, <laughs> in the 80s. Because uh, they're always, it's like just playing a, a Michael Bay film. It feels like there's just explosions and big action, big drama, big, big machismo. So give that a go. But yeah, the 80s aesthetic is to die for. Uh, the, the soundtrack and the look and feel of this game is just... <clears throat> but um, I guess the biggest sell point, like I know we talked about there wasn't a ton of of day one console exclusives but the big sell point that uh that xbox has over its competitors is is naturally game pass so for you know starting at 10 bucks a month you're going to get uh, a catalog of 100 plus games ready to roll from a host of developers covering a host of genres uh, and the fact that all microsoft owned studio games launch day one included in that ten dollars is a huge leg up for for people that are trying to adopt this hardware early that does come with it with a hefty price tag but if you're looking for maybe the the lesser like a slightly lesser experience you know not poo-pooing on the xbox series s but you get that digital console you make that your game pass machine uh, save yourself a few hundred bucks you're still getting 4k gaming and you've got a a, a suite of games yeah. you know a hundred strong ready to roll like i think that's that's the christmas winner Oh. Uh, for families that are looking to try and pick up this hardware uh, for, for their kids or for themselves, uh, that's probably the smarter way to go. Like uh, I know we sort of wrapped up uh, our PS5 discussion about is this an essential day one purchase or an early adopter purchase? And like if if you're embedded and you need it and you want this hardware, you know, like we do, and I've shared story about me sort of going a little bit too far above and beyond to, to get mine you know that's that's just how i am as a person but um like if if i didn't have that that urge and that need and that fomo all the time with these types of things i'd probably say maybe wait a little bit like um if you can get yourself one no doubt there's going to be some pretty good bundles for christmas if they're available around christmas you'd imagine so you know get yourself some heart like get yourself some new console hardware get yourself game pass because it's a great foray into this microsoft ecosystem uh where you can be playing it with your partner with your friends with your kids with your family so on and so forth so i don't think it's an essential day one um purchase i don't have buyer's remorse for for doing what i did to get it day one like i'm very happy with it i'm loving playing this console and the games on it like the the third party games on it are phenomenal uh Valhalla is one of my favorite games of the year and it's just about my favorite Assassin's Creed game uh, in that franchise uh, just for sort of I guess the personal touchstones as well but yeah like if we weren't I guess so embedded in this gaming industry and doing this podcast I wouldn't feel bad if I didn't get the console at launch is yeah. probably the way to describe it. What about yourself? I, I completely agree. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that you would um, be missing out on anything right now by not owning the console. I mean, the processing times and the quick resume features are great and it, they're enjoyable to experience. And I'm almost certain that once you do experience it, going back to anything else is probably going to be a bit of a chore and a pain. However, mm -hmm. whether it is something to drag you in right now, I would say you could probably, you know, hold off. I know that in the, the States, they're actually trying to encompass like bundling the purchase of a console and Game Pass together in some kind of like monthly installment plan. Um, so even even Microsoft sees the value in bundling them together. So much like you said, uh, especially you know, especially when you're being kind of money conscious as well, and maybe you're not into getting the new releases, but you are a gaming enthusiast. It's just good value for money for always buying the Microsoft Xbox consoles and getting Game Pass. Game Pass is now signed up with EA on some titles. So yeah. you also have that added value as well. So um, yeah, no console exclusives, you know, at this point in time, Halo will come out, maybe get it then. But right now it's not urgent. Yeah, like I, I think you touched on something really, really, really beneficial for people that maybe, you know, if you don't have the thousand bucks thereabouts to, to get this thing in some games now, uh, like what you mentioned in the States, they're doing here as well through Telstra. So for 46 bucks a month, you get what they call Xbox All Access. So that gets you the Xbox Series X console and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So you know, just under fifty bucks a month is a lot more palatable than trying to trying to find a thousand bucks if you don't have it now. 
uh, it's it's a 24 month contract, so obviously it does uh, increase the the total cost of ownership compared to buying it outright. But it's also going to lessen that initial shock to the wallet or to the bank account. Um, and I know uh, here in Australia, with with that uh, Xbox All Access, you can sign up for that now, and they are guaranteeing you consoles still before Christmas. So mm. if you still want to get a console in your hands, that's a smart way to do it. Forty six bucks a month save you some save you some headaches save you some massive outlay and it's something that's manageable i think for most people out there to to be able to pony up that cash to get get into the new current gen yeah exactly but yeah this has been our uh our very very condensed xbox series x thoughts and and sort of recap and early impressions episode uh listeners what what have you been finding with this like um let us know. Hit us up on the emails if you want, hello at or hit us up on them socials at We Are 8 Bit uh, regarding your current uh, your current gen Xbox experience. Did you get the Series X or S? Why did you go that way as opposed to maybe the PlayStation Five? Do you find it's you know a, a beneficial purchase? You got no you know buyer's remorse. You're happy with it. What's the biggest pros and cons and takeaways you've had from the last week and a half uh, playing? the new gen uh, consoles. We'd love to hear from you and we can unpack some of that on uh, episode 220 of the mainline Hungry Gamers, which will be returning to the airwaves next week. But uh, Miss Hart, you got anything else you want to say before we close this off and maybe uh, go play more Call of Duty? Oh, just to, you know, highlight that, you know, we are lucky enough to be experiencing this new generation of consoles and um, it's a great time to be a gamer and um, just enjoy what you enjoy if you're current gen if you're previous gen whatever just enjoy video games yeah the, the great thing too is for for any friends or, or your friends and family out there listeners that, that didn't make the jump to the series x or s or the playstation 5 and they're still on ps4 you're still going to be able to play a lot of these online multiplayer games with them so there is no barrier to entry with a lot of these games you can still jump on and play cod with friends across these across these generations or across these platforms too, depending on the game, like a like a, a Cold War, for example, your PlayStation mm-hmm. friends can be playing with your Xbox friends, can be playing with your PC friends, and they could be on a whole different range of ecosystems. So it's awesome. Like it's a very exciting time for gaming. Uh, these these walls are getting knocked down. There's crossplay everywhere. There's a lot of synergy and a lot of buddy buddy stuff, which I love to see. So just 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 enjoy the games. Uh, you know, the world's on fire still. So just you know enjoy what you can and and you know embrace these small victories with these new games and new platforms out and uh yeah that's thg xbox series x focused episode in the bag round one that's the wrong bite (laughs) that's the intro not the outro still half asleep i need another coffee all right here's the outro until next week apit nation we love y'all much love and stay hungry. You've been listening to The Hungry Gamers, one of many gaming and geek culture related podcasts from the 8 Bit Collective over on 8bit.net. Check out more episodes on your podcast service of choice. And while you're there, please be sure to rate and subscribe. Until next time, boys and girls, stay hungry.